Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Sylvester matrix equation theorem. The Sylvester matrix equation is the following. You have AX minus XB is equal to C, where here A is a given n by n, B is a given m by n, m, and c is given as an n by m, okay? And so if this is the case, what does x have to be? x will have to be an n by n. So our goal is to solve for x, which of course is going to be an n by m matrix, right? So when is that possible for a given matrix c, right? And so the Sylvester theorem states that this equation, let's call it star, AX minus XB equals C, has a solution, has a unique solution, if and only if the spectrum of A intersect the spectrum of B is empty, okay? In other words, A and B share no eigenvalues, okay? Excellent, so let's prove this, and so we start by a lemma. So let's do this lemma first. So here's our lemma. If AX equals XB, then for any polynomial, P of X, we have a P, P A of X is equal to X P of B. Okay, so in other words, if this relationship holds if A X is equal to X B, then I can replace A and B with any polynomial of those matrices over there. And so how do you prove something like this? Well, clearly it's true for if I, I can multiply by any constant I wish, right? So in other words, if I had lambda A X, that's the same thing as A lambda X, right? And that's the same thing as what? That's the same thing as, um, plus lambda a x, and that's of course gonna be equal to lambda x b, which is x lambda b, and so in other words, that works for constants, right? So in other words, I can replace x, so a lambda a x is equal to x lambda b, okay? <laughs> Excuse me. Good, and so now let's look at powers next. So let's look at a squared x, a squared x is going to be a, a x, and now what is a x going to be? That is going to be x b, which is going to be a x by, by associativity b, and that's going to be x b, so x b with b, and that's x b squared, and so I have a, so it's true for a squared and b squared, right, so that implies by induction, if I have the same trick by induction, I can have that a to the k x is equal to x b to the k by induction, right? Great. All right, so now I'm going to define a linear mapping. So now here's the proof of our theorem. Define a linear map. Omega, and omega is going to map n by n matrices into n by m matrices. Okay, and what's it going to do? It's going to look at omega of any n by n matrix X is going to be a X minus X B, right? And so our equation star star has a unique solution. if and only if the kernel of omega is trivial, right? Kernel of omega is trivial, right? The zero, the n by m, the zero matrix, okay? So let's prove that that has a trivial kernel. So suppose Ax is equal to Xb, 
then this implies PBA x is equal to x p b b where this p b is the characteristic equation of characteristic polynomial of b but by Cayley Hamilton that's equal to zero that follows from Cayley Hamilton if I input the matrix into its characteristic polynomial, I get zero. That's the Cayley Hamilton theorem. So now I have PABX is equal to the zero matrix. So this implies that PBAX is the zero matrix, right? And so if we write out PB, PX, PBX as X minus lambda one through X minus lambda M, because B has M eigenvalues is M by N. They, might, they may repeat, right? So what's PB of A gonna be? PB of A is going to be a minus lambda 1 identity, a minus lambda m identity, right? Okay, and so when does this equation over here, when is x, so x is in the kernel of this matrix omega, if and only if this is true, right? So x in the kernel, x in the kernel omega, if and only if this is true. Now, the first thing is that if the spectrums, so if, sigma A intersects sigma B is empty, then this matrix over here is invertible, right? And then this would be non-singular. Then that says that P, B, A, non-singular. And that forces X to be equal to the zero matrix, okay? Conversely, so in other words, if the spectrum, in other words, if this is true, then there's a unique solution, right? Now let's suppose there is a unique solution to this over here, right? There's a unique solution to that equation over there. It means that there's the zeros in the kernel, right? Well, if zeros in the kernel, this matrix can be invertible, right? And if that matrix, um, if that matrix was singular, that would say that A and B, there are non-trivial solutions to this, I should say. There are non-trivial solutions to this boxed equation if and only if this matrix PBA is non is singular, right? And that happens if and only if the spectrums overlap. So in other words, this um, this reasoning is reversible, and so we've just shown that this equation over here, AX minus XB is equal to C, for any C I pick, for any N by N matrix C I pick, has a solution if and only if the spectrums of A and the, the spectrum of A is distinct from the spectrum of B, right? So that's the Sylvester theorem for solving matrix equations over here. And we see how in, how in a very, very deep way we use the Cayley-Hamilton theorem and, of course, algebraic structures of how these matrices act when there's a matrix equality. Thank you very much.